Okay, so let's begin this with the uh, bell ringer for the day. One half x plus two thirds equals four, uh, which you should have thought was that you want to kill the fraction first, which is what this whole next two weeks is about, is making sure you get that in your system. This is where you look at two and three and try to find out where two and three meet. Of course, two cannot turn into three, but the next multiple of three is six, so you multiply everything by six. The biggest mistake I see people do is that they forget to multiply the third thing by six, but what you are doing is taking each one of those terms and multiplying and blowing them up, making them bigger. Then remember that you multiply the whole number time or the new number times the top, so you end up with six over two x plus that becomes twelve over three equals twenty four. Six over two turns into three x plus four equals twenty four, and from there we have a basic equation to solve. Subtracting four from both sides, dividing by three to get x equals twenty over three. So again, that would be the start that you should have. Again, you should be getting better at this as you go. We're going to do this every day until uh, you get at least a general idea on how to do that so that we can be confident about it. Uh, today we're going to be talking about chapters 4, section 1. This section is going to introduce us to the skill of making general observations and sketches of situations in which two variables are related. Uh, any situation in which there are two variables, uh, one variable is called independent and the other variable is called dependent. Uh, the independent variable is the one that controls the general movement of the graph. Uh, time, for example, is typically independent because time continues moving and other variables change around it. So the independent variable is also a variable that can only go forward or up in value. Uh, again, time doesn't go backwards, which is why uh, time can be independent. Uh, let's look at some situations real fast and just kind of think about them for a second. It says we're pouring water into a tub. The variables in the situation are the height of the water and the volume of the water. And so the question is, which of these is independent? If we are pouring water into a tub, uh, in all honesty, either one could be independent. Height could be independent because as you pour water, the height is going to go up. So it could be set up where height is here and volume is here. But because the volume of the water is going to go up as you're pouring water, it could also be that volume is your independent here and height is here. This is always your independent variable, the one that goes left and right the same direction as x because x is also your independent variable whenever it comes to x and y. But again, in that situation, it really doesn't matter because both of those actually keep moving forward. So either one of those could be considered an independent variable. Um, we are blowing up a balloon. The variables in the situation are time and the volume of the balloon, uh, which variable is independent. The easiest one, again, as usual, is time because time is typically going to take over everything else. Um, the reason that, I mean, in some situations, volume could be, but if you think about the volume of the balloon, it will not continue moving forward at some point. Uh, air might be going out of the balloon, which means that the volume of the balloon, which is how much is inside of it, uh, might be going down, or at some point when the balloon pops, the volume goes down to zero, and all of a sudden it's over. So again, in that situation, time would be it. So if you were graphing this, you would put your time here, you would put your volume there. Again, your independent variable goes horizontally. Uh, you're cutting a piece of wood. And variables in the situation are the number of cuts and the length of the piece of wood, which variable is independent. Um, again, if you're talking about a variable that, that controls everything that continues to go forward, that initiates the action, I would believe that the number of cuts would be your independent variable. And so if you were going to uh, do this, I would put number of cuts here and length sorry here so again number of cuts would be what would run the graph and then as you do more cuts as you as you have no cuts the length of the, uh, the uh, wood should be here as you make more cuts the length of the wood should go down but again we'll talk about that in just a second uh, another one we're analyzing a cell phone company the variables are the cost of the service and the minutes used during the month um, it's kind of hidden here, but again, remember that time is usually a independent variable, and because we're talking minutes, and minutes is time, you would probably want to put your minutes here and your cost here. And so that would be how you would set it up, and again, that's just a general idea so you can understand what variables are and independent and dependent variables are. You will be asked to interpret and create graphs. The skill is best learned through experience, but uh, I'll look at a few examples with you. Uh, the most important aspect of this skill is our ability to identify growth, decay, and other things that are going to occur. In terms of what growth looks like in a graph, 
Um, remember that everything going forward growth means that it would go in this direction and it could go in any of those directions as long as it's going in an upward direction now what you need to understand is that this is faster growth and this is slower growth this would be somewhere in between but again in terms of growth if the line is going almost straight up that means it's growing pretty fast if it's barely going up a little bit that means it's growing slowly so uh, just kind of keep that in mind whenever you see your graphs there in terms of decay it's pretty similar again those should be lines that are going downward and again the more steep this is a faster decay because notice how fast it goes down this is a slower decay because notice how long it takes for it to get there um, so again those are your growth going up decay going down again the more steep the line the faster it's moving uh, what happens if there is no change or the value is constant that means that as time goes on it's going to go straight we will eventually call this zero slope because again zero slope means it is not changing at all time just moves forward kind of like a flat line and then that's going to be all that you see and then the last type that you might see uh, in some situations is a vertical line which is an immediate drop or immediate growth and that's where a graph kind of does something all of a sudden just drops straight down and then it continues moving and then drop goes straight up and then it continues moving and goes straight down uh, because it's going from here to here in zero seconds that immediate change typically means that something has changed quickly uh, it could be something where we're counting the number of keys so right now if you're counting on your uh, graph there's zero and then all of a sudden I put this down so it goes from zero to one and then for however long it, it takes because remember time is moving forward um, and then all of a sudden I put another key down which means it goes from one key to two keys and it continues to stay there so again immediate changes immediate drops uh, anything like that if it's going down that means that all of a sudden it just got cut and that the, the number just immediately shifted so there's it's just something that changes very quickly so looking at the following graphs is kinda analyzing these uh, looking at the red bar uh, this is time here of course and distance ran so everybody of course started at zero this person here seems to start out the fastest whereas this person here seemed to start out the slowest but as this person got up to a certain point notice that they slowed down because now it's not as steep as it was uh, so their increase in speed kinda slowed down a little bit uh, the blue bar started out kinda slow and then they sped up and then all of a sudden in the end they slowed down again and the green bar did about the same thing where they started out slow they sped up and then they um, went through here and slowed down again uh, this point B would be where the red person and the blue person kind of intersect each other on the race uh, as you can see the red person's in front first and then the blue person passes them up and actually finishes first because they met the top first uh, the green line would represent that they finished second the red line would represent that they finished last so again the things that we're doing today are just kinda like doing that and uh, analyzing what's going on with the graphs uh, total cost number of pounds uh, the pounds usually dictate the cost uh, so that's why pounds is independent uh, as you notice the pounds the price rises quickly as the number of pounds is low and then all of a sudden the price per pound uh, or the cost kind of slows down a little bit this is because like most things if you only buy a little bit they charge you a lot and once you hit a certain point a certain number of pounds on here uh, that you get rewarded for buying more of it kinda like if you purchase uh, one candy bar they charge you at a dollar fifty but if you buy a whole package of six candy bars they charge you two bucks so again the higher the number the lower the cost and things like that so again that's things that you want to be thinking about as you're going through this here we're talking about time of course which is independent higher the grass which is dependent notice that the grass height goes up not so fast but it, it goes up a little bit and then it drops off immediately and then it goes up again and it drops off immediately and goes up again and drops and then goes up and it continues that um, as time goes on so I think what you can think here is that the grass over time grows and this represents someone cutting the grass and then of course they don't touch it so the grass grows again and so the person cuts it right back down and the grass goes again and the person cuts it and then it just keeps going on that way also pay attention to the fact that the height of the grass is never zero this would be mud or dirt so you really would never have zero whatever as your height it's gonna have some sort of height in the grass because most of the time when you cut it we never cut it all the way down to just nothing we usually just cut it down to a manageable height and then the last thing to kind of think about uh, model rocket flight 
looking at this was in your book notice that it it starts out very quick and then all of a sudden it kind of slows down have you ever paid attention to the fact that whenever you throw something up in the air it takes off and then as gravity kicks in it kind of slows down gradually and honestly it stops for just a second and does not move at all before gravity starts to slowly pull it back down then it starts to fall faster and uh, as it's saying here with the rocket once it hits this point the parachute opens and of course it falls down slower than it would if it did not have a parachute so again those are things you need to be considering as you're looking at your work today uh, the last thing you'll be asked to do is consider the shape of a graph from a table this is not so bad as long as you have the ability to approximate locations on a graph um, one of the things is going to ask you is going to say the for example amount of sunscreen left based on number of times it's been used which graph could represent the data in the table the first thing you need to kind of analyze is that this is going down 0 0.2 that this is going down 0 0.2 that this is going down 0 0.2 so this is a steady decrease here uh, it's something that we would call a linear pattern and we'll learn about that later but again a steady decrease is linear which means that it should not be this because notice that if you do that it curves that can't be it anytime your difference is the same it's going to be um, a straight kind of difference there second thing is as you knock it down to A and C I noticed that after one two three uses we still have 4.4 whereas with this person after three uses they are at zero that means that can't be it it has to be C um, and a lot again a lot of the answers that you get today are going to be from common sense and kind of thinking your way through it um, just again don't be afraid to think make an make a opinion and or choose an opinion and, and see if it works or not uh, 8 9 and 10 want you to match them up and so in this what you want to look at is that this is going 89 91 89 81 64 so we have a small drop uh, what minus 2 here we have minus 8 here we have minus something bigger than that which is I think that's 17 so this is a very big drop all of a sudden uh, if I was looking at that first off I noticed that it's going down constantly so it can't be that one and then I notice that it has a big drop at the end so it can't be that one because that is a steady drop which means that this should be uh, number nine so number nine is probably the a graph and that should be covered looking at this one notice it goes 61 to 60 which is minus one it goes 60 to 59 which is minus one 59 to 58 which is minus one and notice again that constant change should be more linear and there you go right there there's your linear change this would be graph B and just to make sure notice that this goes up to up one and then down six whereas again notice up one I'm sorry up two, up one down six this would be graph C so take a moment to look on log on to math Excel there are two assignments actually three uh, the first thing you have to do is get a hundred percent on four point one a uh, 4.1a is set up as a homework and what that does for you is it allows you to miss the question and immediately see that you missed it please don't cheat because if you do not learn this um, stuff pretty much every time you get the question right uh, it's never going to let you practice it again so if you work alone that is fine if you need some assistance that is also fine but you'd be better off um, trying to do as much as you can alone until you get really stumped and then come up and get help because if you get help from the people around you and they give you a hundred percent on that then you're gonna mess up on the quiz uh, but overall any grade less than a hundred percent is a zero and so you have until December 9th I think is the deadline for this to be uh, before the last week of the quarter but I just wouldn't let everything build up like that but again you have plenty of time to get that hundred percent but work as hard as you can to try to get the hundred percent and then uh, what happens is once you get the 100% it opens up 4.1B and 4.1C. 4.1B uh, is a test. Uh, you only get to take it one time. And so make sure before you do 4.1B that you absolutely understand the information. If you do not understand the information as I say in your Google Class doc document, go to 4.1C because you can take that quiz uh, a bunch of times. Now yes it is more questions, it takes more time but at least you get some time to kind of practice before you take this one time one shot and done type thing so other than that uh, you should be working the rest of the day and uh, good luck on this